The progress Arsenal have made under Mikel Arteta is phenomenal, but I don't think us Arsenal fans know how much of a change it's been from his first game in charge. Today I'm going to delve into Mikel Arteta's first ever game as Arsenal manager and compare it to a recent game against a team of similar calibre. Yes, that's right, I'm going to be analysing Bournemouth 1, Arsenal 1 from Mikel Arteta's first game in charge to Arsenal 6, Sheffield United 0. But before I get into the video, I'd just like to ask you guys to please smash that like button, smash the subscribe button and turn on notifications. Without further ado, let's begin. I feel like the best way to start this video is looking at the respective lineups. Look at how many players from Mikel Arteta's first game in charge on the right are still in the squad. Only Nelson, Smithrow and Saka remain from Mikel Arteta's first game in charge. A game in which we saw Bukayo Saka start at left back and now our star boy is our starting right winger. If we look at profiles individually, Raya against Leno, you've got two top top goalkeepers there. Leno was mainly known for his shot stopping ability but Raya gives us that composure on the ball. And this goes on to my first point in terms of Arteta's first game in charge to our latest game in charge. We couldn't have got off to a worse start against Bournemouth as Ryan Gosling scored the opening goal of the game. But I'd like to analyse the goal. It came from Arsenal playing out the back and losing it to Bournemouth's pressure. None of the Arsenal players look composed with the ball at their feet at the back. This is what I mean in terms of profiles and why maybe we were too quick to judge Arteta in his first couple of seasons. It is clear to see that Arteta needed players that can put his philosophy out onto the pitch in the best way possible. And no disrespect to the likes of Socrates and Mustafi, but they just didn't have the on-the-ball quality to implement what Arteta wanted. Now it would be unheard of for Arsenal to lose the ball whilst playing out from the back. We have the likes of William Saliba, Gabriel, Kivior, Ben White and of course David Raya who are so so good with the ball at their feet. This gives me the opportunity to give some praise to a player that was criticised when playing under Arteta because I didn't think he deserved the stick he got. And that player I am talking about is David Luiz, probably one of the best passers we had in that back four. And I remember his assist against Everton for Aubameyang's goal. That is what Arteta wants from his centre-backs, the ability to play that forward ball with such accuracy. I personally think David Luiz is one of the most underrated centre-backs on the ball in world football. The technical quality he possessed was absolutely incredible at times. Maybe his defending wasn't great, but what he offered in the build-up on the ball was just something you can't criticise him for. And this goes on to my next thing of Arteta always having a certain way of playing and that it's not just all of a sudden he started adding, you know, last season with Jan Granit Xhaka playing on that left side of midfield and his attacking positions he was picking up and with the overemphasis of always playing out from the back. All of these things were there in his first game of the season. In particular, the pressing. Arsenal, whenever they lost the ball, would then hit a press. And if they didn't win the ball back from that press, they settle into a 4-2-3-1 shape. And that's what we're seeing right now from Arsenal. When Odegaard goes to press and he doesn't collect the ball from the press, we go into this mid-block sort of formation with Jorginho and Rice just sitting in front of the back four and Odegaard playing in that number 10 area and our wingers essentially marking the full backs of the opposition team. It's just now we've got players that understand what Arteta wants that it looks like we're doing so much better. Now I'm going to compare the statistics from both games. On the left you have Arsenal's 6-0 win against Sheffield United and on the right you have Arsenal's 1-1 draw to Bournemouth. Notice how many shots we gave up against Bournemouth compared to the amount we gave up against Sheffield United. We conceded 12 shots, which is three times the amount we conceded against Sheffield United. And this comes down to how Arteta has us defending as a unit and players understanding that 4-2-3-1 block shape when we've not won the ball back from the initial press. But then also, of course, the technical ability of every player in the lineup helps in that first phase of build-up where we shipped so many opportunities for the opposition. And I also think the most important stat after that is the amount of shots that we got off against both the teams. Obviously, it looks like 17 shots is a lot, 
but look how many are on target. We were not getting quality chances and that's what Arteta has improved with our current team. He's making sure the structure is good so that our attacking players have the ball in really, really dangerous areas. And then when you have the individual quality of the likes of Saka, Martinelli, Havertz who's now turning up, you are going to score loads and loads of goals. And finally, this idea of suffocation. We gave Sheffield United just 19% of the ball compared to the 40% we gave to Bournemouth. We are not giving teams the opportunity to breathe. We want that ball at every single opportunity. We want control and we will get control whatever the price it is for. And that's the statistical difference between Arteta's first game in charge versus that 6-0 win against Sheffield United. If you didn't know, Aaron Ramsdale was actually in the Bournemouth lineup that day. And maybe that was the game which caught Arteta's eye. Because it was just so obvious to see that there was a golf in quality in terms of on the ball with Leno and Ramsdale. I think the most disappointing thing is the amount of saves that Leno had to make in that game compared to Ramsdale. Before I tell you, I want you to guess which goalkeeper is the one that played for Arsenal that night and which one was the one that played for Bournemouth. I want you to look at the amount of saves the goalkeeper had to make and also the successfulness of their passes. Well, you may be surprised, but the images of stats on the left is actually Bernd Leno's performance against Bournemouth in that 1-1 draw in Arteta's first game in charge. And on the right, you have Aaron Ramsdale's performance. I think it's interesting in the stat which jumps at you first is the accurate passes. Ramsdale attempted 19 and had an 89% passing accuracy compared to Leno who made 13 and only had a 59% accurate passes completed. And on top of that, Aaron Ramsdale had 6 out of 8 completed long balls. This is no disrespect to Leno who I think was one of our best and brightest spots in Arteta's first couple seasons. But for the way which Arteta wants to play, he didn't want his goalkeeper to be making as many shot-stopping saves. Unfortunately, most of those saves that Leno had to make were self-inflicted from his own poor passing. With Ramsdale only having to make one save on the night, that was because he had the quality to play out of the press. And subsequently, of course, this took the eye of Arteta who signed him just three seasons later. And for the sake of comparison, here is David Raya's stats against Sheffield United in our 6-0 win. Notice how he had to make zero saves and the amount of successful runouts completed. And this is important because Arteta wants his goalkeeper to be as high as possible. Because if the goalkeeper is able to come out and prevent an attack, he then prevents a shot on target or potentially a dangerous scenario. Also, look at the accurate passes completed at an 81%, which is still really, really good. Anyway, that's going to end today's video on that note. And I think the point I'm trying to make is Arteta always had a certain way of playing and he stuck to that from his first game to the latest game in charge. He just needed the technical profiles in his squad and the confidence in his players to be able to implement his philosophies in the best way possible. And now we're seeing a team that's full of confidence and with so much technical ability right from the goalkeeper to the strikers, to the point of suffocating teams to zero shots, which is just ridiculous. Anyway, that's it for now Gunners. Please smash that like button, hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications if you want to see more videos like this. Peace.